Here at Property Hub, we've been investing in property for a long time and helping a lot of people invest too. But what would we do if we were going to start again? Well, in this video, we show you. If you got in your time machine, went back to 2006, how would things be different compared to how you actually did do it? So the first thing I would have done is taken advantage of the opportunity that, that played out at the time, which is that you could buy property for little or no money at that point in time. That to me, is a, an opportunity missed, I guess, but it's also a disaster avoided because as we know, 2008 burnt a lot of people. So to expand on what I would have done it pretty much exactly, I would have hoovered up as many bytes lets as possible pre-08 with cash flow in mind, making sure that they covered their costs, which was very difficult then. People were advising you to buy properties with negative cash flow just because the capital growth would, would go up. Sounds crazy but lots and lots and lots of people were doing it. So I would have avoided that, but if I could make it cash flow neutral and make it work, I would have done that because what we didn't know was around the corner was interest rates were about to plummet. And clearly Rob, that made a huge impact on everybody's portfolios. Now remember, these properties would have gone into negative equity, like my one property at the time did, but I've still got it today. And, it's, and after the interest rates adjustments, it's made a healthy profit ever since. So absolutely no regrets there. The regret, as I say, is I didn't do more aggressively with caution. So making sure I wasn't just buying anything for the sake of it, but anything that covered its costs, buying it because you needed those products to expire before they went on standard variable rates. And then from that point, enjoying a healthy cash flow. And with that cash flow, I would have used it to start buying property. I managed to do one a few years after the crash, and that was in Leeds, and that has done very well since then. But back after the crash, you had to put real money down and put deposits down, much bigger deposits. Managed to do it, but I wasn't in the position that I could buy a few every single year. Back then, it was just saving. And it's that snowball effect we, we talk about where you just have to snowball it out, start slow. But over time, you keep adding to your portfolio and then suddenly want to equity. So you release some from there, you can do another one. And it all snowballs. That would be for me, Rob. You kind of hinted that you would leverage up and go more aggressively. Did, did you have the ability to do that at that point? To a degree. So I'm a cautious kind of person. I could have put more cash. I could have left nothing in savings. I could have just piled it all in. I could have tried way harder to push the loan to value. It wouldn't have been enough to buy masses more properties, but another two in London would have made a dramatic difference to my net worth today. Of course, I didn't know that at all. But if I'd been able to see exactly how it would work out, then it would have been a no-brainer. One thing I would have done, though, have had a clearer plan from the start that was more congruent with what I wanted in the long term. I should have been thinking a lot more about long-term growth because I wasn't in a position where I really needed the money then. I wasn't in a position where I wanted to get out of my job and sort of replace my income or anything like that. So actually, with perfect knowledge, wouldn't have changed a lot, but totally fluked it. And it would have been much better to have a clear plan from the start. And I think that's why I bang on about it so much now, because I didn't. And I think you're so much more likely to succeed if you think about the long term and work back from there. But hindsight is an amazing thing uh, as well as that i think the, the main thing that i would have done would be to buy a lot more around about sort of 2009 10 so again i think it's not really having the historical context to realize what uh, an opportunity it was so when i was buying properties around 2010 they were very cheap relatively speaking there wasn't a lot of competition no one no one else was really bidding and I didn't know enough to know that that was quite unusual. And I wasn't thinking about the property cycle in any way because I didn't even know about it. But had I known, I would have done a lot more. I would have leveraged a lot more. I would have taken more risk and not played it quite so safe. Because looking back, of course, we now know that that was the trough. That was as low as things were going to go get. And over the last six years, things have really kicked on. And that's something that I think we've both kind of touched on. It's the cycle we're looking back we can see how all this maps onto the cycle but at the time we didn't know the cycle existed so we couldn't really factor that into what we were doing exactly i think that's one of the big lessons from this and when we look at what we do now the cycle's going to play a big part of it 
So it's fun to look back at the past, especially when you know how the future is going to play out. It's quite easy to say, right, we would have been super aggressive. But now we move forward and go, well, what if we were doing if we were starting right now? It's interesting because we've already been investing. So I think what's certain is we wouldn't go and replicate our exact portfolios that we have now. Because where we are at the market today is a lot different to where we've been over the last 10 years. We've moved around the cycle. And back when we started, as Rob said, neither of us knew about the cycle. We just thought property was a good thing to do. We've educated ourselves. We've immersed ourselves in this over the last decade. And now we've got better awareness and understanding. So how we would tackle it today would be very different. So Rob, what would be your first steps? Okay, well, I've already talked about the plan. I think that's really important. I'd also build a network before doing much else so I could focus on my strengths. But I didn't do that before. I was a, sort of a bit of a lone wolf. And now I'm in the lucky position where because of the podcast and things, I've got a pretty decent network. So if I didn't have that, I know the value of it. So I'd try to build it up the next obvious thing to do would be to go okay I'm ready to invest well where do I invest and I think at this point I'd look to pick a strong area but I wouldn't worry too much I wouldn't worry as much as I have done in the past about finding the absolute best area so fundamentals of course right power of town of course but Manchester versus Liverpool versus Leeds versus wherever else not such a big deal So that's how I would start. So I haven't actually got to the point of going and putting any offers in on any properties yet. But that's all the groundwork that I'd be doing. And I think that groundwork is important. So that's what I'd do. Rob, I'd be curious to hear how you would get started. I think you made a great point about the networking. I didn't really think of that. That's going to be super, super important because the people you work with, you know, from letting agents, the mortgage brokers, your solicitor, these people in your team are are key. I'd probably give myself a a stop deadline as well that I have to invest by a certain point just so I, I have avoided that procrastination after i've done the short-term goals i'll be looking at the long-term goals i'll be looking at the cycle looking at when i want to stop investment so putting a stop date as well on the cycle and then i'd target a region similar to yourself so i wouldn't be like i must invest in this part now yes there's parts i would stop investing in in a few years time and then i'd reassess it every year or two to say right i think this area has had the best of its cycle now next area and move on like that and i'd be just planning that out maybe even pencil in cities at certain dates to say right this one probably will no longer be viable at this point in time and work my way through through that way it's interesting what you say about having a smaller window of time and i think that's a really important point with the knowledge that we've now got that we didn't have at the time we now recognize where we are we know that property prices don't move randomly we know that they certainly don't just go up and up forever we know that there's a period of time not don't know exactly when but when it's just not going to make sense anymore and when there's going to be some kind of crash so knowing that yeah it does mean that you you might set more ambitious acquisition targets for the next couple of years than you otherwise would thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video there are two quick things for you to do First, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and then go check out the Property Podcast wherever you listen.